Great, now as far as fan layout, we do want a fan in the back here that's gonna exhaust the air out from the CPU cooler and into the back of the case. The case right now is flipped upside down. It just makes it easier to put in the motherboard. But on the front side of the case, you're gonna wanna have a fan that pulls the cool air in and into the case, and then that way it can go right out. So again, the Dark Base 700 does come with two included fans, and this is the position I put them in. You could, if you wanted to, add two more fans right here, and maybe one at the top if you wanted to. However, the top of this case is not the best for expelling air out as it only has a few slots on top towards the back of the case. All right, but let's get right into it. Let's take our motherboard and you'll wanna make sure it's oriented the correct way. So the IO shield should be facing out this way. You see all the connections here, it has a slot over here. I'm sticking my fingers through there. And I already removed a couple of slots for the GPU. So let's go ahead and put it down very carefully. And we'll wanna make sure that they go right on the standoff. So you wanna kinda of angle it first. Angle it so that it goes into the shield IO placement there. And I can see here it's lining up, but I want that middle one to be right in there. And it is, I see it right there. I don't know if you could see it, but it's right on there. That's gonna kinda of hold it in place. That's the nice thing about this case. Kinda of really helps you out when you're building a PC. Next, we're gonna to wanna to take our screws and go ahead and screw the motherboard down onto the case. I'm just doing the middle there because it's readily available, but you'll probably wanna do the corners first. So do opposite corners. I'm gonna do this corner over here. Some spots may be hard to get into. And maybe don't tighten them down all the way, kinda of leave some wiggle room just in case one of the holes is not lined up correctly. So in total, there'll be eight screws that you'll be screwing in. Make sure you use all the screws. All right, nice, everything's in now, screwed down. Now I can go ahead and put the graphics card. All right, along with the 10600K CPU, this Gigabyte GTX 1080 is at the heart of this gaming PC. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the GTX 1080 is still very relevant in 2020 because it's faster than the 1660 Super and it's also faster than the RTX 2060 for games such as Warzone, Fortnite, and so on. You're just gonna get better FPS and a better gaming experience. Yeah, it doesn't support the ray tracing stuff, but who uses ray tracing in competitive games such as Warzone and all those type of games? So this is what you want right here. Or if you can find a RTX 3080, even a 3070, they're just impossible to find right now. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in. And you wanna make sure that this little plastic thing is pulled back and it will snap back once you insert the graphics card. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, it looks like it's in place. I'm gonna go ahead and press down on it. And I can see that that little plastic thing kinda of snapped into place. All right, I'm just gonna screw it down, make sure it's nice and secure. Kinda of push it in a little, make sure the holes line up. And since it's a dual slot GPU, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and screw on this second screw here. Okay, nice, now that this is done, we're gonna go ahead and turn the case over on the back side, and we're gonna take out the back cover. We're gonna insert our Corsair power supply as well as our storage drive for our games. All right, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew these two screws here, pull back on this cover to expose the back of the case. Okay, so if we look towards the bottom of the case, we are gonna see two slots here for our 3.5 inch hard drive. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and unscrew these screws right here, there's three screws. And you're gonna pull this drive cage out, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and insert our four terabyte hard drive in here and put it back and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so there it goes, just goes in just like that. And it does have like kind of these rubber things on the inside and the outside for securing the drive and making sure there's no vibrations. And we're gonna go ahead and take four screws and screw them right here to secure the drive to the drive cage. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the opposite corners. All right, now that the drive is secure, just go ahead and put it back in the slot. Just like that and screw in these three screws and you're done with that. All right, now let's take a closer look at the back of the case because I did fail to mention that this case does include 
a controller for additional fans and RGB lighting. So if you need to handle more fans than what your motherboard can handle, you can use this controller. You plug in this controller to your motherboard and then this can control additional fans as well as lighting. So it's a great thing to have. So we're gonna take our Corsair AX860. It is a modular power supply. And if you guys are buying a power supply nowadays, I do recommend you buy a modular power supply. So this is where you plug in the cables. So of course we're gonna need the 24 pin ATX connector to plug into our motherboard. And then we have additional connectors for SATA and other peripherals, as well as the CPU power. Now this motherboard does have eight plus four CPU connectors. So we are gonna be able to provide enough power for that. All right, and for this case, make sure that the fan on the power supply is facing downwards. We do have a filter, so that's another nice uh, thing about this case. It has some nice air filters you can slide out and clean every now and then. So it's gonna collect all that dust before it goes into the power supply and keep this power supply cool. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out which of these cables I need, and then I'm gonna connect them first. Then I'll put in the power supply. That way I'm not struggling later trying to figure out how to read these and plug them in with a very tight space. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I figure out the cable situation. I am gonna need a cable for the ATX 24 pin power, which you see right here. So I am gonna need two of the CPU connector cables since it is an eight pin plus four pin CPU power on the motherboard to give us the most power for our CPU. I am gonna need a SATA cable to connect our 30.5 inch hard drive. And finally, thanks to the low power requirements of the GTX 1080, I'm only gonna need one eight pin PCI Express connector. So let's get it all wired up and I'm gonna go ahead and insert the power supply. So I'm gonna carefully place the power supply with the fan down into the case here. I'm gonna go ahead and screw in the power supply. Okay, now that I have the power supply screwed in, I'm gonna go ahead and route these cables through these rubber grommets here. Now, I think for this case, I am gonna stand the case up so I can see both the back and the front of the case. And then, that way I know which grommet to route the cable through. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stand up the case and do that now. Okay, looking good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route the ATX power connector through this bottom grommet here. There we go. For the GPU, I'm gonna route it through the middle grommet. I think it'll kind of cover it up if it's in the middle. Now for the two CPU connectors, I'm gonna route it through the bottom grommet. And we'll connect a set of power connector to the back in just a bit. Okay, I angled the case just so that you guys can see and I can see where to plug in the connectors. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect up our ATX power connector. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this cover here and kind of reach in and take these out so I can kind of reach in a little bit better. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to take out this cover, you kind of press in the middle and then snaps out, pull it out. So again, this case is great because it's so modular. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop these out as well. Same thing right here. And now we have a little bit more playroom. Okay, great, let's give it a try now. Yes, I got it in. Yeah, if you guys know a better way, just let me know. All right, guys, I finally got it in. I would say that's the hardest part of this build because of the massive CPU cooler. Again, if you guys have a better way, let me know. But let's continue on with the build. All right, next we're gonna connect the PCI Express power to our GTX 1080. And there it is, nice clean connection. All right, now we're gonna turn the case over and I'm gonna show you the SATA connector. You're gonna plug in the back. All right, so for the SATA connector, you wanna plug it into the very first power plug and it'll just be in like this. There we go. And the rest you can tuck it in and you'll have more connections if you need to plug in anything else like LED strip and so on. Now, same thing with all these connectors here. These are for the front panel. And one of them, of course, is for the system fan. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and connect the USB-C to the USB-C header on the motherboard. That's gonna allow us to have our USB connection on the front of the case. So looking at the location of the header, it's right here right in the middle. So I'm gonna use the middle grommet to route that cable and plug it right in. Right now it's plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that slack back. 
Okay, now I'm gonna connect the front panel audio to the audio connector on the motherboard. All right, and we see that the audio connector is right up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it through there. And we can see that one pin is missing and it's blocked off on the connector. That's how you know where to connect it to. And it's gonna go like this. And we can go ahead and push it in. And we're good to go. Pull back the slack. Okay, now we're gonna connect the USB 3 cable to the header on the motherboard. Now it is located, unfortunately, under this graphics card. So I do recommend, instead of doing what I did, is plug the cable in first before you put the graphics card. But since the graphics card is in, it's fine. So I'm gonna just stick it through this middle grommet here and I should be able to connect it just fine. And there we go, just like that, it's in. I'm gonna tuck in the excess slack of the cable back inside to the back. Okay, now we have the front panel connectors that we're gonna route and plug it into the header here. So I'm just gonna go through this top grommet here. And make sure you look at your motherboard manual to figure out how you can plug this in the correct way. All right, now that they're all plugged in, go ahead and take some of that slack back. Just like that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the six pin connector here and you're gonna hook it up to the controller here on the left side of the case. So now it's hooked up and we can use it. So if you look here in front of the case, you do have a control for the RGB lighting. If you just press a button, you can change the LED lights on the front panel. Okay, and you also have this little slider here, which is gonna allow you to control the fan speed of your uh, system fans. So, so if you wanna be able to use the controller here to control your system fans, then you should connect your system fans to the fan controller in the back of the case. And you should also connect all your RGB to the back of the case as well. That way everything's lit up the same. Okay, so I've opted to use the onboard fan and RGB controller on the case in order to control everything from the front panel. So I just wanna be able to have that option. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything up to the fan controller to get that working. So we are gonna need SATA power. So I'm gonna to need to connect this connector here to the top, just right here. So that's gonna power the controller. And we're gonna go ahead and connect this cable here on the right, bottom right, to our PWM header on our motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Next, of course, I'll have to plug this into one of the SATA connectors here. There we go, we'll just tuck that in. So next up, I'm gonna connect the onboard system fans to the controller, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm just gonna connect it to fan rail number one, which is on the left side here. All right, looks like we have everything hooked up correctly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add this RGB strip to the front near the glass, so it's gonna illuminate the inside of the case. It does come with its own little controller that you just plug into set of power and it has a little remote. And it makes it really convenient to change the color whenever you want on the fly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that solution. All right, so the kit I purchased came with two strips that are magnetic strips. You just kinda hang on magnetically to the case. All right, you do have to kinda stretch these out, make them flat. I think what I wanna try to do is put one in the front here and one towards the top. So let's give that a try. All right, so there we go. I was able to put one strip in the front here and then one strip on top. They're all connected together and they're gonna connect to the back with a SATA power cable. And it does come with this cool little remote, which is gonna allow you to power it on and off if you wanted to, change the colors and cycle through different effects. So it's really cool and I got it for a really cheap price. Again, if you're interested, I will leave a link down in the description below. All right, this is a little controller that you're gonna plug into. Make sure the arrows line up. And then you can connect this to your set of power. I'll go ahead and use this one. And we'll tuck it all in here. All right, so now what's left to tie up some of this mess and make it look a little bit more presentable. So give me some time to do that. And I'm gonna use these Velcro strips that were included with the Be Quiet case. And they're really cool, they're nice and flat. And so let's get right to it. All right guys, this is as good as it gets for me as far as cable management. I'm gonna go ahead and put the back panel back on. 
and then we'll go ahead and power on the system see if it boots up all right so let's hook up the monitor keyboard and mouse and let's give this a go all right i have the computer hooked up ready to go i'm about to power it on to see if it's going to power on and pulse successfully so just in case you guys are curious as to what monitor i'm pairing this gaming pc build with and what gaming peripherals i'm using i'm using the asus pg279 cube monitor and it's a 165 hertz refresh rate 1440p monitor works great with Warzone. It's an IPS panel, so the colors look great compared to TN panels. So as far as the gaming peripherals for the keyboard, mouse, and wireless gaming headset, I'm using the Asus RG Strix Electropunk peripherals. Really great for gaming. I use it for Warzone all the time, and I really like them. So take a look at those. I'll leave links down to those below as well as my monitor. All right, let's take a look and see if my system powers up. And here we go, I'm gonna press the power button. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Okay, I see lighting. I see my RGB strips. Oh, I forgot to plug in the monitor, how about that? All right, it's powering on again. I just plug in the display port cable. Whoa, here we go. It looks like it worked, guys. So here's the MSI BIOS. It's running at 4.1 gigahertz, which is the rated clock speed for the 10600K CPU. And it looks like everything is running normal. So I do see that the RAM is just running at the 2133 megahertz base speed. So I'm gonna to try to enable XMP to get that up to be running higher in case I wanna overclock. But yeah, everything else looks good. So next steps is make sure everything in the box is configured correctly. I wanna make sure that UEFI is set up, which I think is a default for this motherboard. And I wanna enable XMP to get my RAM up to speed. But yeah, uh, as far as the BIOS build date, May 21, 2020. That's pretty recent, so I shouldn't have to upgrade it. All right, guys, I'm really excited and I can't wait to install Windows and Battle.net so I can get Warzone running and get you guys some frames per second. And hopefully this is more responsive than some of the older systems I've played on. Now, before I continue, I'm gonna show you guys a quick look at what it looks like with the glass panel on. And there you go guys, it looks pretty sweet. So I did take a few days to really test out the gaming PC and see how well it worked with the games that I play. So the main game that I play is Warzone, so I'm gonna tell you my experience with that. So the very first thing I noticed is that if you're running this gaming PC build with the stock CPU frequency and the stock frequency for the GPU, then you're really not getting the best out of this system. In order for you to get that great performance out of the system and have that nice buttery feel when you're playing Warzone, you are gonna have to overclock the system. You can get by without overclocking it for games like Fortnite, maybe Valorant and stuff like that. But for games like Warzone, I definitely recommend that you guys overclock. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you guys the difference with me just playing Warzone stock with the system the way it comes stock. And I'm also gonna overclock it and show you guys the actual difference. And it is quite significant. All right, so let's test out this gaming PC just stock form on Warzone and see how it plays. After that, I'll show you how to overclock the CPU on the MSI motherboard, and I'll show you how to overclock the GTX 1080 graphics card as well to get the best possible performance out of this gaming PC. All right, and if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I will do my best to try to answer all the questions that come in. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.